Today, I'm going to teach you how to set up and play Cricket the Game, a board game based on the popular sport of cricket. So the first thing you need to decide is which variant of the game you're playing, T10 or T20, by flipping over the double-sided board appropriately. The T10 we will be using here is the side with a larger outfield and floodlights. You then choose one of the teams and remove one of either a spin bowler or pace bowler to make up your starting 11. Shuffle the pitch condition cards and pick one at random, placing it on the pitch condition slot on the board. Flip a coin or roll a dice to see who will declare, who's bowling first or batting first. Place the crease tile face up with the batting team. Then set your fielders based on the field restriction card. A zone is one of the five large pizza slice areas and in T10 you're only allowed two fielders per zone with only two in the outfield until the third over. fielding team then chooses a bowler and places him in the current bowler slot. Place their bowler rules cards next to the bowling rules slot. Shuffle up their relevant over deck and deal out 6 cards at the bottom under the numbers. And then keep your bowl cards in hand. The batting team then chooses two opening batsmen and places their cards next to the current batsman slot on the board. Place your stance token, setting it as a green for defensive or red for aggressive. Place the VAR card within reach. And then place the skill play cards next to both the batsmen and bowlers. along with the facing token next to the opening batsman who is at the crease receiving the ball. Lastly, set up your scoreboard of choice to keep track of runs, wickets and overs. And that's it in terms of setup, so let's get straight into the game. At the start of every ball, the bowling player plays a ball delivery card face down next to the chosen ball area, along with adjusting the field if they want to. Set the advantage meter to match the batsman's confidence as located at the bottom of their card and the batsman can change stance if they want. The batsman then places the ball on one of the five field positions to try and guess the delivery. The red areas on the bowling rules card show which balls can be delivered. After placing, the bowler then reveals the card. If the batsman chose the correct area, they go straight to advantage 3. If they guess incorrectly, you minus the advantage based on how many zones they were off by, with specialist batters never going below the neutral position. At this point, the bowler can decide to use one of their two skill play cards, both or none, and then you turn over the over card. These can give you certain bonuses for both the bowler and batsman, with this one letting the bowler roll a d8 instead of a d6. At this point you'll both roll your dice depending on what you're allowed to as allocated on the card. For bowlers it's usually always a d6, but with this overcard it is for this one bowl a d8. The specialist batsman always roll a d8 but batsmen lower down the pecking order always seem to roll d6s. Roll the dice anyway and work out the final results by adding on the relevant advantage number to the batsman's roll or the bowler's. As you can see the bowler has rolled a 7 here 
and the batsman has a 3, with no advantage to add, so he has missed the ball. If the batsman ever misses by 3 or more, and is in an aggressive stance, the bowler rolls a d8 to determine if they have bowled them out, needed a 7 or 8 on the roll to clean bowl them. Here I got lucky and rolled an 8, so he's clean bowled first bowl, out for a duck. If the batsman is playing defensive though, you need to roll a d6, needing a result of 6 to clean bowl him. Whenever someone is out, you remove them from the crease and replace them with another player, marking your wicket number up also. So you go back through all the previous steps and this time the batsman has guessed correctly, but they have been sledged on the overcard, so their advantage goes down by 2. This time it's a d6 versus a d8. The bowler rolls a 6 and the batsman rolls a 3 that goes up to a 4 because of the advantage, so the result is just a miss. If the batsman had rolled a 5, it would have been an equal 6 resulting in a blocked ball. If the batsman had rolled a 1 and the bowler a straight 6 or 8, the batsman would have been clean bowled and straight out. A roll of 1 from the bowler and a roll of a straight 6 or 7 with no adjustment means the batsman gets a boundary for 4. But a roll of 1 from the bowler and a straight roll of 8 from the batsman earns them a 6. If the batsman just gets 1 or more than the bowler's result with his advantage though it's called a hit. You then roll a d6 for t10 games or a d8 for t20 games to determine the distance of the hit ball along with the green or red dice depending on your stance for the bounce. So I roll the 1 for the distance and a 1 for bounce. At this point you could use one of your skill cards to re-roll either dice with me getting a much better roll. Let's first place the distance dice in the relevant area as marked on the board. The 5-6 is the outfield, the 1-2 is the infield, along with the 3 and 4 on a T10 board. You then add on the bounce dice result. Since it's a green 2, it will go straight into the boundary for a 4, the fielder can't stop it, with your batsman gaining one confidence on every boundary. But if you roll a red result on the bounce dice, that means a fielder can catch the ball on a 6 plus for the infield or a 5 plus for the outfield. The two red zones where this one has landed mean you can catch it on a 5 plus though. So roll your dice and see what happens. I rolled a 3 meaning the ball wasn't caught and it then bounces one more zone. Two more if it's a red 2 and it stays where it is if it's a red 0. The batsman then runs, move the facing marker to the other player. You earn one run for the infield and 2 if the ball ends up in the outfield. If no fielder is in the ball's location, it's just a clean run, mark up your score. But if a fielder is located where the ball finishes, and you run for the maximum, you could potentially be run out. The bowling player rolls a d6, and on a result of 6 they are out, but anything less and they just get the max runs. If you're caught, not clean bowled or LBW'd, you can use a VR check. Here the batsman rolls a D8 if it's during the first 5 overs, you'll need to roll a 7 plus, but during the 6th and anything over that, you roll a 6 plus. 
If you're unsuccessful, the batsman is out. But if you pass the check, it's classed as a no ball, and you're suddenly safe. Also, when striking against a pace bowler, if the batsman gets a three or more than the bowler with advantage, you can add on to one to your distance dice. But when it's less than the three against a spin bowler, you have to minus one from the distance dice roll. If you get a no ball result on the over card, you give the batsman one free run and play out the hit as normal. During a no ball, the batsman can't be bowled or caught, but he can be run out. You then play another ball delivery without flipping over a no over card, where the batsman once again can't be caught or bowled, but can be run out. Playing an over card as usual on the following delivery. Anyway, at the end of the over, you tidy up the bowler's cards. Choose another bowler and place his cards so long as he hasn't already done two or three overs, depending on match type. Change the field as per the rules for the T10 or T20 game you're playing, and then turn over two or three over cards if you are using the express play rules. Every over card has a symbol on the bottom left of the card. If it's a dash, it's a dot ball, meaning a block or miss. A one means a single run is scored, so move your facing marker. A two means two runs are scored. Three is three runs, with you moving the facing marker once more. A ball means the bowler gets to use a d8 on their next actual bowl. And a bat means you play whatever is on the card. Like this boundary card, roll a d6, and if you get a 1 to 4, it's 4 runs, but a 5 or 6 nets you a 6. After the express play cards are played, you continue the rest of the over as normal. Only the first and last overs of the game don't use the express play rules. Lastly, I want to talk about the slips. During pace or spin bowler turns, you may place a fielder in the buy area. This means when a shot is blocked, not missed, you can roll a d6 to see if you catch them out on a 6. But on an over card, like this good shot, which has a volume symbol on it, if a shot is blocked or missed, you cause a glance, which can be caught in the slips again on a d6 roll of a 6. So repeat everything I've already said until you've completed a full innings, swapping over with the other player to see if they can beat your runs scored. It really is a great simple game that you just need an over to get to grips with. So I hope I've helped show you how to play. Please check out the rulebook that's available for free and try the game on Tabletop Simulator. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the game as much as I do.